All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we actually have a phenomenal, talented individual. She is none other than MC Red, and she is here live on the line. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm honored to be on your show. I appreciate you reaching out to me. Um, It definitely just kind of blew my mind. Hey, it's definitely an honor to actually have you on the radio station airways this evening. It's certainly an honor. Thank you. Thank you. But, you guys are in Canada. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I actually saw as well when you're uh, promoting the uh, radio interview flyer that you actually uh, mentioned that this is actually your very first interview. And I got to say, I'm definitely honored to be able to provide you with your very first, very first interview, not only on the inter- live on the internet, but also live on the FM dial as well. Yes, um, I've had one other inter- interview with Kelp Music. It's more of a podcast. It was like a you know a video type interview, and she put it on her YouTube channel. But I've never been on anybody's FM, so this is legendary for me. Like this is a you know a milestone for me. I really appreciate it. Hey, you are most certainly welcome, but I know you're a very, very busy individual, so I'm going to dive right into this broadcast, but I want to take you back to the beginning of your amazing career this far, and I have to ask, what actually made you decide to get into the music industry initially, because you're such a phenomenal, talented individual. I mean, you got bars. Oh, thank you, man. Um, really, is this from, you know, hanging with family, freestyling, the love of music. You know, my older brother, he grew up on, like, you know, the loonies. Two Prague Digital Underground, so I was constantly listening to music. And when I got in middle school, it was this thing we would just do at the lunch table, like you know, with the forks and spoons beating on the, you know, beating on the lunch table. Someone would be making the beat, and everybody would just be participating, freestyling. My older sister, she loves to freestyle, so it was just like, you know, a thing that we did for fun, you know. So that was really how I got started. And as far as taking it serious and wanting to be a real rapper. Um, I had my first job at 14, and they had a recording studio there. I was intimidated to go in there because it seemed like everybody was already professional and they were hogging the studio time, you know. So when I got my first MacBook Pro in college at UC Riverside, there's a program called GarageBand on there. That's when I was really able to play with my freestyles. And then the college was still in one of the freestyles, so I was like, all right, let me take this a little more serious and start writing it and mix the, the freestyles with the pen. And that's pretty much, you know, how I come up with my songs. I freestyle and find the flow, find the energy. Like, what does this beat, like, make me feel? Like, and then just go from there. Unless I already have a topic that, you know, I need to get off my chest. But, you know, it really just came from the love of music. And also as well, I want to take you back to the year 2012, February 12th to actually be exact, where yourself and Young Dude actually collaborated together on the single uh, who's fresher than me? I have to ask, how did yourself and Young Dude get connected? And of course, what was it like just collaborating with him on that particular single? So that's an interesting topic. So that actually is the first song that I ever bought the exclusive rights to a beat from. That's when I started learning a little bit about the music business. Um, I was in college. I got my, uh, you know, they call it a refund check. Your tuition was left over. And I invested it. We found this producer online through uh, SoundClick, and he sold us the beat for that price. And, um, you know, we had the laptop. We were in the dormitory, and we just created the song. So also on my campus, I was very active. I was the BSU president. Um, I'm a Delta. I'm part of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. So I did a lot of events. I would get a budget and be able to, you know, uh, book the vendors, book the DJ. And this one particular DJ... He heard the song, and he was like, let me sign you. I want to manage you guys. So young dude is actually my kid's dad. I have two kids with him at this point. But at, back then, we were just in a group. It was four of us. I was the only female, and there were uh, three other guys. So we dropped a mixtape called Planet He Rock. Um, Who Fresher Than Me is the only exclusive track on that uh, project. You know, so that's pretty much how it formed. We were just in the dorm room. And uh, he was like, who fresh you than me? Like, he came up with the hook. And I was like, oh, man, that's dope. You know, and I wrote my verse. And from that song, we, you know, we got, I wouldn't say a, a deal, but we, we got some attention to where somebody wanted to invest in us and help us advance our career. And I got to say as well, is, is that song actually still available to be streamed or purchased today? Because I do know a lot of our listeners would probably like to go back and actually check out some of your earlier releases if it's still available. 
it, it's definitely available. Um, um, I actually just finished my album. The problem is I'm, I'm, trying, I'm having trouble coming up with a name for it. It's very precious to me because I completely invested in it. Multiple songs I've recorded at different studios, and I'm like, I own these exclusive uh, rights to the beats. I want the songs to be a certain, you know, I want a certain sound. So uh, there are certain songs where I sang, and then I found the right singer, and then I have to, you know, book time again for her to come and replace it. So I believe I should be dropping it in March, March of this year. But um, Don on the track is a, a local Bay Area producer. He's been supporting me for the past two years. So it's been a, you know, I always say progress is a process. And that's my mentality for this project. I'm not in a rush to put it out. I want it to be right because it's something that represents me and, you know, it's my grind and my compassion and commitment to it. And also as well, I actually read that you are actually the founder and CEO of uh, Tiki TV Productions. I was wondering if you can tell our listeners a bit more about this company. And of course, what services do you actually offer to the general public today? So I am a videographer, photographer. Um, while I was at in college, you know, that's when my music career started. But as far as the Bay Area, when I came back home, I came back as a videographer, so they didn't really know that I was doing music. You know, I played the backfield. I was um, at clubs before big events, making sure I shook the right hand so I can get in when it started as a camera operator. Um, I worked for different artists that are starting to blow up, and this is like five, seven, three, you name it, years ago. Um, just doing a lot of camera work, and I call it community service. I also have a... Um, a movement called Guns Down, Cameras Up. And for like two years, I drive in my car and act like I was doing like a drive-by shooting. But instead of using a gun, I was using my camera. So Tiki TV production started back in Riverside because I knew while we were doing these shows, I was also booking our shows. Well, while we were doing these shows, we need a cameraman. We didn't have a camera, but we had the laptop. And at that time, the iPod had a camera on it. And um, so... Any type of camera I could use, that's what I was using. I started, you know, putting up that type of footage, making blogs, doing lifestyle blogs, just things to promote our grind. We had a, a channel. Our first channel was called Watch My Grind TV. And then um, eventually I got my first DSLR and started shooting music videos. Young dude, I shot a video for him called Dead Broke. And that was my first video. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of, I'm dope. You know, like, I need to take this series. So from then on, after we dropped Dead Broke, our son had turned, he was just about one year old. And, you know, I just started taking it serious. So um, at this point, I just shot my first, I would say, industry music video. Uh, there's a rapper from the Bay Area named Kafani. He has um, a lot of songs with big name artists. And then Kill the Music, she's technically not my manager, but she's been reaching out to me in that type of, um, you know, in that type of sense, like that love. She's been booking me for shows. I also book my own shows, but I've never had anybody just genuinely reach out and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I got this opportunity. Hop on it. Like left and right. Literally today she signed me up for two photo shoots. Tomorrow there's another one. Um, she, she booked me for two shows on the 19th. And I'm a very uh, loyal person. I, I know I wanted to shout her out. She's an international artist. Her name is Kill the Music. I wanted to shout her out, but yeah, that's pretty much how Tiki TV's productions form. You know, just knowing as artists, you need a cameraman, you need the camera following you. So I've always been the person to play multiple positions, whether I'm on stage, behind the scenes, I'm doing the research, doing you know, doing the whatever needs to be done. I just try to you know fill in the void and make sure that we're as successful as possible with low budget or no budget. That's not going to stop me. I'm, 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 I'm going to do it regardless. And I got to say as well, you definitely have a, f a phenomenal formula with uh, Tiki TV Productions. And I have to ask, for the individuals that are in your area that do want to book you for a photo shoot, how can they go about doing that? Because I do know there's different processes for every single business. So what's your process to get to potentially book you for their next photo shoot? Well, I just definitely leveled up on my equipment, so my prices have changed, but I have a base price whether it's for events. I've done a lot of events for local black businesses in the Bay Area. Usually they want digital commercials, you know, like a 60-second uh, event reel. I might go to an event for four hours, 
and then they want me to cram all of that into 60 seconds. So I have to have a consultation with them in order to know exactly what they want because you can't just give a price. I, I need to know what more do I need to add to the budget. Um, for the most part, I try to work with people, but I can't put out more than I'm going to uh, get back. You know what I'm saying? So I, I found myself in situations where I charged a low price and I spend more money making sure that their uh, event or, you know, their the look of whatever they wanted, you know, it transpired. So I'm, I'm no longer at that sense because I've, I've spent too many years doing it. So if they want to book me, I have a base price, and we build up from there kind of like a la carte. And uh, my website is tkitvproductions.com. I'm also available on Instagram at Tiki TV Productions, T I K I T V Productions with an S. And um, I pretty much just started over. And the, you can see my newest work starting with 2022, which is Mind Sex by Kilda and Kafani. And also, as well, on April 4th, 2021, you actually released a single titled Zaza featuring Untamed DZD. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about that song. And, of course, what was it like working with D in the studio? Man, that guy is phenomenal. DZD is from Arkansas. He's a producer. Yeah, he owns his own record label. He actually had a, a big movement back home, and he came to California to dream chase. I am a hustler. I usually work at the airport in the daytime and the gas station at the nighttime. And that's where I'm able to network and meet more people throughout the city, you know, whoever's coming through and, um, you know, let them know about my music. So I met him at the gas station overnight. And it took us about, I'll say, six months to actually connect and do some work. Once we linked up, we made Zaza. He wrote the hook. This is the first time I ever let anybody write for me. And I say write for me because he wrote the hook. He wrote the hook and he was like, I need you to lay this hook down. So I laid the hook down, wrote my verse, and, like, the town loves that song. You know, marijuana culture is here, and it supports that. So um, he produced it. I sat, I sat with him and watched him create almost an album in one day, like literally make the beat, write the lyrics. Like, he's a quick worker. You know, I'm inspired by him. I appreciate him, and I'm glad that I'm able to work with him. Most of uh, 2021, I've dedicated to working with him so he's produced for me and i would um you know shoot videos for him and do photos for him um we just have a like a business partnership type thing going on so he's definitely part of my movement uh he's phenomenal i see him making it big like you know like one of the big names like this guy grinds hard he puts his all into it and it's only a matter of time um, we have Zaza. We have a couple more tracks we haven't released yet, but I think I shot about four or five videos for him last year. And every time we shot, I'll make sure I got him a photo shoot. Um, there's, you know, when somebody show you love, you show it back. But business is business, but we develop, you know, a type of respect and love for each other. And our our, our passion, it just matches, you know. So um, I see us doing great things in the future. And hopefully you can reach out to him as well because I haven't seen anybody grind as hard as he does as far as a producer and an artist. And, you know, he plays multiple positions as well. But he's from Arkansas. He started, he came here. He didn't know anybody. And, you know, at this point, he's just trying to get his name out there as far as California is concerned. And, you know, keep building. And I gotta say as well, he's definitely one hell of a producer. He definitely did some phenomenal work on that song you guys did together. Yeah, like I, I, I love the sound of it. Like, man, um, I don't know if you heard the song "Dip," where I remixed. Uh, I put my hand up on my hip when I dip, you dip, we dip. So I pretty much got the beat from him. I put my own spin on it. He produced that. That's also another song that people love, and it's. It's easy to love because when you take something from the legend, something that's great, it's familiar. Even if you can't put your finger on like I can't remember exactly who did it, but I know, you know, so um, that was another song. That I'm not sure if you heard it or not, but I released that last year as well, and I pushed Zaza and Dip, and I'm lit. I don't know if you heard I'm lit, 
that's a different producer, but those three songs really helped me get my name out there and have people respect me as an artist and not just a videographer. And also as well, I actually read that you are actually an inspiring publicist. I have to ask if you can, if you if you can tell us a bit more about your publishing ventures, and of course, who do you actually represent today? Um, honestly, I've been behind a bunch of artists in the background as a camera operator, and I wanted to figure out how to offer my video production services. You know, in the midst of social media marketing, and like I've sat with people from LA to Riverside to Oakland while they're working on their projects and helping them with their delivery, um, giving them a little influence on the lyrics, like, okay, this is why you're struggling on this bar. You got too many words here. Like, I just try to be an all-around, you know, player. So um, as far as publicists, I'm hoping I wasn't misunderstanding publicists, but I felt like a publicist for a certain artist that I pushed for a couple of years, and I stopped doing my music. Like, I heavily believed in them, but you know, and tried to push their music. But sometimes it's like you can't be more passionate than the product, you know. So um, at this point, I'm doing whatever my heart desires. Like I feel like I have more to learn about being a publicist. A lot of times we we see other people doing things and we're like, well, I want to do that. But we have to, you know, do more research and know, you know, the, the background knowledge on what it takes to do that and build that type of company. So at this point, I'm considering – Starting a nonprofit because I want to show love. I want to I want to bring up my community, and I want to bring you know more people into the arts. My high school and my middle school was a performing arts school, first of all. And then my high school they had a media um, after school program where they taught us how to use Adobe Premiere. They taught us camera angles. You know, um, you know there was a recording studio there as well. So we're losing a lot of those resources. My middle school is now. Uh, a prison, uh, it's not a prison, but it, the police department, it's like a police department. And that's one hell of a message to send to the community. It's smack dab in the community. All the schools that I went to are all in West Oakland. That's where I'm from. And it's basically, you know, you, what are you telling the youth? This is your future. Jail. When this school used to represent arts, culture, you know, it was, it was an outlet for, you know, to do after school instead of getting in trouble. So I want to find a way to still build, invest, and also give back. I don't care if it's publicizing. I don't care if it's, uh, you know, teaching classes on how to edit. I also have things that I want to learn. So I'm, I'm looking forward to building a team with somebody that wants to build, like, a greater foundation to bring that type of culture back. We're losing it. If, if there's a few people that are holding on to it, but they're fighting strong to just break that you know, and take it from us. So that's pretty much where I'm at with it. Like, I'm like, no, we're not giving up like that. Oakland has a lot of culture, a lot of talent. The world has a lot of talent. But when you, you target a community and you send these subliminal messages, you're killing our people. You know what I'm saying? You, you're killing the future of them. They need positive outlets. So um, that's pretty much what I want to do. I want to be able to inspire, educate, and continue to learn. Like, I'm a, I'm a sponge. I don't think I know it all. I'm one of those people that will try to do a little bit of everything if that's necessary, but I know I need a team at some point, you know? So that's where I'm at with it now. I created my own. That's why I have so many social media pages. I consider it a social media street team, Tiki TV Exclusive Bay. That's where I promote up-and-coming artists. Most of the promotion comes from anybody that's booked me, but if I see anybody along the way, I like their stuff, I post it. I ask them to reach out. I'm not charging you to post you on this page. Tiki TV Productions is strictly business. That's my booking. Uh, M.C.R.E.D., the one you keep tagging, that is my professional recording artist page. I be careful. I'm careful of what I post there because I want people to, you know, respect my grind and take it serious. And then Tiki 1000 is more popular I think because it's so raw, like you see me at, at work, you see me grinding, you see me in the studio, you see me giving back. Like you, it's, I call it the milking pot. And it's, it's confusing at times for some people, but for me it works because I'm not going to depend on anybody to put me on. 
I'm going to put myself on it. And with all this technology, from one one share, you can send it to so many platforms. You know, and at some point, you keep doing it and you stay consistent, people like you start to reach out. People like Kilda start to reach out. You know? So that's just pretty much my mentality. It's like I know where I'm headed. I don't know the destination, but I know I'm headed somewhere that is going to uplift my people. Also as well, August 10th of 2021, you actually released a song titled You Got Me Fucked Up that I'm going to be playing immediately following this interview here on the FM dial. And I have to ask, could you tell our listeners a bit more about this song if they haven't already heard it? That way they can wrap their heads around it a little bit more when it does get spun right here on 97.7 FM. So I consider myself like a PG-13 gangster rapper at times. And I was in my, my feelings because, you know, I work, like I told you, the gas station. I show so much love. There's times, they treat me like I'm a street therapist at times. And, you know, you get people that will test you because you have a good heart. And sometimes you got to stand your ground and let them know, like, Nah, you got me fucked up. Like, I show you love, but that don't mean you're going to fuck me over. It was pretty much a freestyle, and I was venting, you know. And uh, there's a part on the, the uh, hook where it says, I'm straight acorn like T.O.I. Like, I'm from a notorious project in, in Oakland, California. I'm not a gangbanger, but I love repping where I'm from. You can see me in my letters and my Delta stuff still throwing up where I'm from just letting people know I'm proud of where I'm from. So I wanted to give it, like, a hook that was catchy and make people want to sing it, but also let them know, like, I'm not coming from a, like, I'm here to kill you and shoot you. I'm standing my ground. I'm repping where I'm from. Respect me. That's, that's pretty much my mentality for that song, respect me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't say respect me, but that was the message that I, I believe I got across, and I feel like you can party to it. It's like a turn-up song, you know? And that's also produced by Don on the track. But I was feeling, um, you know, I, I have different situations at that job where I'm, I'm ready to just walk out. And then you have other people that come smiling and they, they keep you motivated. But that, that song was literally inspired by disrespect and being in a different part of Oakland, but also feeling like this is my second home because I've been working here so long and people, they treat you like, they're treating me like I'm from over here. You know, you get what I'm saying? So, it's like, I don't know. I just feel like I was repping where I was from. I was feeling like I was on some, you know, some hood stuff for a second. And I, that's why I try to give a nice mix on my album of, uh, you know, positive influence, positive messages, just being real, you know. And, and I grew up in the hood. I, was, I, I went to college. I've had great opportunities. I have a good mom that raised me right from smashing cans to, you know, making me start working at 13 years old. So a lot of people, they can't say the things I can say and proudly say it. Like they, they would try to act like they're just balling. I say I'm grinding. I, that's the background I come from. So you got me fucked up means no matter what, you're not going to stop my grind, you're not going to stop my money, and you're not going to stop me from representing where I'm from and, you know, trying to motivate the people. Like no matter what she's been through, homelessness, uh depression, whatever it is, she still kept going, she, she stayed driven, and she made good music. But I have to ask, what is next for yourself, MC Red? Is there anything we happen to miss during this broadcast? Anything else you do still want to talk about or promote? What well, we still got you here live on the Canadian radio station dial this evening. Uh, Choose Me was also produced by uh, Down on the Track. I went to a job training in Texas. And my supervisor happened to have this flush, like, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but he had one of those affinity pools. And I was like, can I shoot a video? I didn't think he took me serious. He took me serious. I had a little uh, DJI pocket, too. It's like a small pocket cam camera with, the, you know, the technology of a drone, how it's cinematic. No matter what, if you're running, it's still going to be stabilized. I brought that. My coworker that I had just met, I put it in his hands. I taught him how to use it in five minutes. He filmed it for me. I shot a video. That is also another song that, um, you know, they like. So I want to shout that out. And, and just let people know, sometimes it's not about having a whole bunch of money. It's about using what you have and to the best of your ability, and you get a great outcome. 
So uh, he shot the video. I edited it. And for me, that was my first out-of-state video that I shot. You know, so I just wanted to put that out there and let people know, like, don't come. It's not a competition. It's all about, like, you know, beating your last progress. Like, do better than you did before. So I wanted to shout that out because that was big for me. Like, I had no idea he was going to show me love. Something told me to bring my camera, and it just worked out. So, um, you know, that is also through Tiki TV Productions. But also, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. There's a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, but most of all, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything you got going on if they're not already doing so. I want to shout-out um, m.c.red, which is my page. I'll be building that up more. Uh, Tiki TV Productions, which we've been talking about a lot. I mentioned Kilda. Um, you know, I'm so blessed to have someone like her in my corner. Uh, Ms. Glitter CEO, I have to shout her out because she helped me get my image together. Way back when I, I started that group, I didn't understand it then, and I get it now. And I also have a different perspective on it because, you know, times have changed, but... The guy that managed us, he's basically telling me, oh, you have to play the backfield because we need young dudes to blow because he has the image already. And once he blows, then we can put money into you. So at this point, I'm like, I don't care how much money I have. I'm putting it into me, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get the look I want. But I'm not into all that plastic surgery and the fake stuff. It's about being fresh and fly and being real. You know, so I'll have to shout her out because, she gave me this, you know, that how my hair is shaved off and I have, like, the dreads or the red the red hair. MC Red, she got me going with the, the whole red look. So I, I definitely want to shout her out um, because of that. And I'm um, sticking with it. And so far it's working for me. Who else do I need to shout out? I need to shout out DJ Immortal. I can't believe you even found me. I don't know how you found me. I know it's through Facebook, but, like, it's just amazing. I want to shout my mom out. I've just gone through some um, life-changing experiences, and she held me down. I can't speak on it at all, but I have to shout her out. God is good. I was blessed with a great mom, um, you know, and I pray as long as she's on this earth, I can show her success. Like, I've always wanted to make my mom proud. So I think she's proud, but I want to make, you know, you know, you, that's what I really want to make it for. I want to make it for my mom. She's, she's a little older. And, you know, she's getting tired of my bullshit at times. So that's my, the major person I have to shout out. Like, Mom, that's the first person that bought me my DSLR. And my grandma, shout out my gran grandmommy, that's what I call her, bought me my first MacBook Pro, which is how I was able to record on GarageBand. My sister, TC, Retro Pen 23, that is my, my biggest role model. She's a YouTube blogger. She, she travels. Um, she's a sneakerhead. But she's always giving me positive motivation, um, putting me on game. She's getting me cultured. She, she, took me, she tricked me. She told me she was taking me to uh, San Diego, get to the airport, my ticket say Hawaii. Like, I love my sister, and, you know, I've always looked up to her. When I was young, she had Jordan, but when she would go to her track meet, I was trying on her shoes even though they couldn't fit. So those are the major people that I have to shout out. I got a lot of loved ones in heaven, my dad. Markel, uh, Mikey, Rachel, I have a list of people, but as far as who is presently in my life and pushing me and making sure that I succeed, I've shouted them out, and, and um, hopefully they hear it, and if not, you know, they already know how I feel, so, yeah, man, look out for me, I say March, I think I'm going to drop it on March 31st, I got 12 to 15 tracks about to drop. And they're all bangers. Like, Don on the track, I love his sound, and I feel like I met the perfect producer. I talked to him two days ago. Like, we're we, we going full force at this point. And I got to say, first and foremost, Red, thank you so much for just taking a little bit of your time out this evening and sliding into the 97.7 FM airwaves. It definitely was an honor and most definitely a privilege. And again, thank you so much, and hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Yeah, I got to get that passport. I hope to meet you in person, man. Like, 
people like you don't you don't run across people like you too often, man. Like you putting on, and you're not even in. You're not even here. Like that's amazing. So I love what you're doing. Uh, checked out yesterday's interview. Only for a hot second. Like I'm all over the place, but I just wanted to just get the vibe of it. And usually, you know, I can't. I, I like to admit, you know, I'm, I'm I'm nervous. Like you make me feel comfortable. I feel like we're having a genuine conversation, almost like I've met you before in person. You know, so I love the vibe. You're a great person, and just keep doing what you're doing. Um, I'll make sure I vote for you. And hopefully you just, like, you know, you be, like, the biggest, like, you deserve it, man. You put on so many people, like, from famous people to people that haven't been heard about, especially where you're from, like me. Are you actually from Canada? Uh, that I am, yeah. Born and raised in the great white north. <laughs> yeah, see, that's amazing. And I heard the people out there are real hospitable. You know, I've lived in New Orleans. There's different types of hospitality, but what I've heard about Canada makes me, like, really want to go there and just spend a year there, you know, just, like, take a break and go to Canada, like, so if I'm ever able to go out there, I would love to meet you in person, if you're ever in California, you're in L.A., wherever you're at, like, I'm coming, I, I, would, I would like to, you know, actually give you a hug, man. Hey, honestly, that's actually my dream vacation, is actually to make it out to Los Angeles, so one day... I will definitely make that happen and, and get out there under some palm trees. And I'll make sure that, because we're connected on Facebook, so I'll make sure that that definitely will happen. We're connected on Facebook and Instagram. That is true. That is true. I'm slipping tonight. <laughs> so at this point, we connect for life, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you as well, Red. Thank you so much. And definitely have yourself a wonderful night out there in California. And, of course, soak up that sun for, for us Canadians down there, because we don't get summer for another couple months. Ah, it's okay, man. Hey, most definitely, uh, Red. Got enough warmth in your heart that you can wait for the summer. Hey, that, 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 you already know what to do. I got to say, Red, again, thank you so much, and definitely have yourself a wonderful night. I'm pretty sure we'll talk soon. We will. Thank you, sir. You have a good night, DJ Mortar.